Hey, what's up everybody? I'm starting off in the car today because I am going to attempt to try to fix the headlight switch in my wife's car. So what happened is uh, the other day uh, on Tuesday, I think it was, I went to take Kendall to practice for soccer. It was dark. I jump in the car, start it up, turn the lights on, bang, nothing. So I thought, oh man, there's no way that both of these lights went out at the exact same time, right? It, it can't be, that's like, what are the odds of that? And so I said, well, I have a spare bulb, so I'm gonna try it out and I'll just drive to practice with one headlight, right? So I go to the garage, I get the other uh, little bulb that I had, the spare, I pop it in, nothing again. So I was like, hmm, okay, this isn't right because I knew this one was working. So then I thought, oh, what about the high beams? I wonder if they work. And so I turn the high beams on. Sure enough, both the high beams work. Aha, that's my first clue. All right, so <laughs> next thing is, is I think, okay, well, it's not a problem with the bulb then because in the bulbs that are in the car, they're dual, right? So that means the high beams and the low beams are both in the same bulb. It's not like two different ones. Um, so I was like, okay, well, the bulb is probably good then and maybe it's a fuse or maybe it's uh, what's called a relay. And so I was like, I gotta check those out. But for right now, screw it. We're going to practice because I had to pick up two other girls on the way to practice so I couldn't be late. And we just drove with the high beams on the whole, the whole time. So if you got high beams in Puyallup on Tuesday and you flashed and no one turned them off, <laughs> that was probably me. Uh, let's just get into it, okay? Let's check it out. Okay, and then, it's whoa, scientific. loud radio, hang on. All right, so I'm gonna turn the lights on. Now I'm, I'm pointing out here at the, at the uh, garage so you can probably see them, but, okay, so lights are on. I've turned the switch. Let me show you here. So right here, turning the switch, and then nothing, all right? But watch, if I do high beams, right, push it forward, Boom, high beams come on. So you can see high beams off, high beams on, switch off, switch on, nothing. All right. So the first thing I thought was, okay, it's gotta be a fuse, right? That's the easiest, simplest thing to check. So I checked both fuse locations. I checked the fuse location right here. That wasn't it. Then I checked the fuse location here, which was these two. That wasn't it. Then I checked the relay for the left and right headlights. That wasn't it. Okay, so what I'm thinking then is that this part right here, there's somewhere in this that goes to the steering column. This is the light switch assembly. And somewhere in there is where it's not working. And it's obviously with the little connector that goes right into there, wherever that little, uh, probably a little metal piece in there is probably worn out and it's not relaying the information back through the steering column over to the lights. So that is gonna be the next step to check out. Okay, so the next step that I have to do is I have to separate the top column from this bottom piece right here. So this top piece comes off, the bottom piece falls down, opens up the steering column, and then I can get to this piece right here. So we're gonna try that next. So underneath, I've taken the screws out from under here. You can see there's some holes there. That's where the screws were, and you can see it's it's kind of loose now, right? It's like, it's moving around a little bit. All right, so this is the tool right here. Now don't be fooled by the name of it, door panel remover, okay? Basically what you need is you need this thin little plastic piece. See how thin that is right there? And that gets in the crack of what you're trying to separate. All right, so you can see I've got it all off right here, the top and the bottom piece. Now guys, when you're doing stuff like this, um, it's important to note that when you're taking these things off, you're gonna, it's gonna sound ungodly. It's gonna sound like you're breaking stuff. More than likely, that's not happening. See these clips right here? There's four of them on there. Well, I guess five, there's a second one down on the other side. Those clips are what popping out and it sounds like this plastic is breaking, but it's not. It's supposed to pop off. It's supposed to be secure, so when you pop them out, they're going to sound like they're breaking, but they are not, so no big deal, okay? Don't be scared by that. Okay, so this is what we're gonna replace right here is this whole mechanism. 
all right? This whole thing comes off all in one piece. There's two screws, one and two, and then there is the electronics that, you know, snap into the back of this housing right here, all right? So that's pretty much everything that it's gonna take just to replace this. Not too bad, pretty simple. Okay, so I have the piece out. Here is the old one. This is the new one. Now, word to the wise, make sure before you go plugging things in and screwing them back down and all that, just turn it around, plug the electronics back in, the wiring into that housing right there, and then turn your switch and see if the lights work. So we're gonna do that. As you can see, I've plugged it into the housing like I said. So now all we have to do is turn the switch now let's look up at the garage to see if the lights are on. Aha, look at that. Nifty, nifty. All right, let's try. I'm gonna do this one-handed, so forgive me here. I'm gonna try the high beams. Yep, high beams are on. Low beams are on. Boom, nailed it. Lights go off. All right, man, so that was it. That was pretty stinking easy. You know, the, the hardest thing about this whole thing, look at this, let me grab this piece right here was the um, piece that goes over the gear shift on the steering column was getting that little piece kind of, you know, cause it's just such an awkward angle. Like the, like I can't even do it right with the awkward angle. See that angle right there to get this out and then pulled out this way. So you had to like come up and then out and then out that way was nuts. That was the hardest part about this whole thing. Other than that, it was literally two screws on the mechanism, right? The little, on the switch assembly. And then you had to just pull it out. It was it was in there real good. I mean, you had to yank on it, but it was two screws and then three screws underneath. That was it, so five screws total. Now, the reason that I bring this up and the reason I wanted to do the video was because, um, you know, just a little bit of, of thought into how things work and a little bit of trying to maybe self-diagnose what's going on will save you time and money, okay? Um, this whole thing, so this this piece right here, all right, that costs 58 bucks from Honda, all right? This little piece right here, this is a tool that I used. This was $11 at, you know, your local, um, you know, auto parts store. And I didn't necessarily even need this for this operation, but I need this for something else later. But um, it does help to pry. It's like a little mini crowbar, right? So it does help to pry those plastic pieces apart um, and separate that top from the bottom of the steering column. So for what? Maybe a total of, I think it would have been $70 close to, not over 70 uh, including tax for two different parts. And you don't even have to buy that second part that I bought. Um, you could have just used a screwdriver, really uh, a small flathead screwdriver probably would have worked just fine. So for less than $60, you could have got the part and done this work yourself. But when I went down to Honda just to see, cause I always, I always want to ask like, I wonder how much it's going to cost me if I have somebody else do it. Because a lot of the times, uh, maybe I just don't want to do it, even though I might know how, but I just don't want to. It was, $65 minimum just to diagnose it, but possibly up to $130. And that's just to diagnose where the problem came from. That's not to buy the part. That's not to pay for the labor and have somebody do it. So all in all, this probably would have been somewhere around, I don't know, they probably would have charged me at least 70, $65, $70 for the labor. 60 bucks for the part, so we're at 130, maybe another 130 for the um, diagnose, and then maybe, you know, who knows, taxes and what else. We're, we're probably looking at a minimum of, I don't know, $300. Even if you don't know, you know, there's gotta be somebody out there that knows how to do these things that's connected to you, that's a friend of yours. So reach out. Say, hey, even call me, that's fine. Just say, hey, Justin, do you know how to do this? Maybe I do, maybe I don't, I don't know. But I know I know other people that know a lot more about cars than I do. So if I don't know, I might know somebody that does, but you guys probably know somebody anyways. So the whole point of it is, is that I saved a ton of money and it didn't take me that long. So I spent about a sixth of the cost of what I would have spent, okay? 
plus it only took me 20 minutes it's gonna it took me you know a half an hour just to drive down and get the damn part so it's taking me longer to get it than it is to actually do the work all right so save yourself some time save yourself some money call somebody that you might know you guys can do these things okay it's quick it's easy and even if it's not you know you get together with a friend you have some drinks you you, you feed them a lunch you have a good time while you're doing it and you learn a little something that's it crap i gotta, I gotta put this thing back together now it sucks oh <laughs>